Hey guys, Dr. Alex here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a few exercises that you can use to fix your winging scapula. If you've been told or find that you have a winging scapula, which means the shoulder blade tilts forward and you can kind of get your hand up underneath it, we're gonna go over some exercises that you can use today to fix it. We're gonna go over the exercises first, but if you wanna stick around at the end of the video, we're gonna talk about why I actually don't think this condition is a big deal uh, based on uh, a few papers and what a few uh, systematic reviews in the research tell us that, you know, winging scapula, scapular dyskinesis or poor movement of the shoulder blade actually are really poor predictors of having a shoulder problem, having shoulder pain, having a shoulder injury, and probably don't matter that much. When somebody comes in to see me and they tell me, hey doc, I have this problem, a physiotherapist, a chiropractic physician told me about it, do we need to fit or can we fix it? And I say, yeah, we should probably work on improving your shoulder strength and do some of these exercises I'll show you, but not to fix the winging scapula and not to fix the scapular dyskinesis. So we're gonna talk about that before we get into it, if you don't know what a winging scapula is, that's that tilting forward of the shoulder blade. The worst possible case is if you go in and you cut the long thoracic nerve that turns on the serratus anterior muscle, that is how you could instantaneously cause that winging scapula. Uh, the winging scapula is most likely going to be from a couple of factors, too much rounding through the thoracic spine, an unhealthy neck, weakness in that serratus anterior muscle, and then also too much tightness in the pecs, especially the pectoralis minor muscle that's going to pull that shoulder forward. So those are the exercise, sorry, those are some of the problems we got to deal with with the exercises. Let's get into it. So before we get into some of the exercises, one thing we need to be able to do is know if we're turning on that serratus anterior muscle. So the serratus anterior muscle, it attaches onto the inner side of the shoulder blade or the scapula, and then it attaches here onto the ribs. So, so to see if you can control it with your brain body connection, what you can do is bring your arm as deep as you can get it into the armpit here. And then in this waiter's tip position, when you raise the arm up from say 90 to 120 to 150 degrees, you should feel that the little digits along the ribs pop upwards. Those are the digitations or the actual pieces of that serratus anterior muscle. You should feel those little digits pop into your fingers and you should feel them contracting. And so what we want to do before any of these exercises is make sure we can actually feel that muscle turning on, that we can do it with keeping our chin tucked, our core tight, and we can move the shoulder with only that muscle and also keeping the trapezius muscle nice and quiet. So what I recommend you do, bring that hand into the armpit, make sure that you can feel it turn on, and then also put a hand onto your shoulder blade and make sure that you can raise the arm up while keeping this muscle here relatively quiet, the big upper trapezius, so you're not doing this when we get into the exercises. The first exercise we're gonna do is a wall angel. Now the wall angel, before we show it on the wall, what it's gonna look like from the front, arms a little out, we're going from 90 degrees, raising them up to 120, 130, and we're gonna be doing that without moving our trunk or our moving our neck. We also wanna make sure that the trapezius or the shoulder muscle stays nice and quiet. When we do this against the wall, we are gonna make sure that most of the forearm is gonna stay on the is gonna stay on the wall to really maximize that serratus anterior activation. I would start off for the wall angels with just one arm. Again, the arm is 20 or 30 degrees uh, away from the midline. And in this, what I'm doing is I'm raising the arm up from 90 degrees up to around 120 or 130 degrees. I've got my left hand on my trapezius muscle to make sure that it is nice and quiet and soft. And since we've already practiced activating that serratus anterior, we know that that is the primary mover here. And this drill, is without a lot of strength building, is going to be mainly for activating that muscle and improving the brain-body connection. 
so that when you do need to use it, your brain is gonna be able to turn that muscle on properly. Try doing it with one arm before you move on to two. This drill is much more challenging. I'm really focusing on keeping my chin tucked, my core tight, and isolating all of the movement to that serratus anterior using the skills we've already based off of keeping the trapezius nice and quiet. And I'm really, really having to focus and work on keeping the forearm and the elbow against the door so that it's largely that serratus anterior muscle that's the primary mover. The next drill we're gonna go through is simply stretching out the pectoral muscles. So you're gonna have to find a doorway or some sort of ledge where you can put your hand. In this case, I have it, we'll call it 180 degrees or parallel to the ground. And I'm trying to make a C between the door and making my arm round off through my body, really pushing the pec muscle forward. After you've stretched for 30 seconds with the arm parallel, I lower the arm here, trying to get some different bands of the pec minor and pec major muscle, really focusing on pushing the chest forward. And then as we go upwards, we're gonna get different fibers again of the pec minor, pec major, and in some cases, some of the other armpit or axillary muscles Again, we can hold these for 30 to 60 seconds with nice easy breaths. We haven't really talked about the scapular retractors which include the rhomboids and the middle and somewhat inferior trapezius muscle. These muscles are gonna be good for improving scapular motion, scapular mechanics, and might help contribute to keeping that shoulder blade more firmly against the thoracic wall. These are drills that are never going to hurt to do, especially if you work in an office. You can use a band or a bent over weight, shooting for two or three sets of 10 per side. One of the most important drills we're gonna go over is the waiter position push-up. So this is really similar positioning to the wall angel, but in this case, you can see I've got an overly heavy kettlebell you'll probably find that instead of the 20 pounder I'm trying to use here, you want to use something in the two to 10 pound range. Similar technique to the wall angel, moving that arm from 90 towards 120, 130, 150, making sure the chin's tucked, core is tight, and a few sets of 10 per side. This drill is all about stability and control and making sure you're turning on that serratus anterior muscle without using your core or your traps. We talked a little bit in the intro about the importance of the thoracic spine for scapular winging and shoulder movement. So we got to focus on making sure we can move our spine. We've got my favorite drill, the cat camel. To do a proper cat camel, there are three things we need to focus on. Going into the angry cat, you gotta let the head fall towards the ground, push up strongly through your hands to raise those shoulder blades up or protract the shoulder blades. And then last but not least, you wanna tuck your tail in, which feels like you're squeezing your butt together. At the top of that motion where the head falls, push through the hands, tuck the tail, you wanna take a big breath in for one second and then let it fall and go into your camel position. You should feel a good stretch through the spine here. If you can take a big breath in at the top, really focus on letting that head fall towards the ground. Focus on a nice easy breath over 10 or 20 reps. And we've saved the hardest drill for last, which is the push up plus. So the push up plus is all about protracting the scapula where the scapula, the shoulder blades round forward. This is where we're gonna be able to strengthen them the most. Actually, you'll notice in this uh, exercise demonstration, I do a better job towards the end of keeping the core engaged, basically a straight line between ear, shoulder, uh, and hip. Uh, at first, I'm rounding the mid back a little bit too much. All the motion should be through those shoulder blades rounding and retracting. You'll notice the arms stay straight and all that's happening is the shoulder blades are moving back towards the spine. And then the push up plus is when I push as hard as I can through my hands and those shoulder blades protract or round around the spine. 
So guys, thanks for sticking around. So we're gonna conclude this video with a discussion about scapular dyskinesis, scapular winging, movement of the shoulder blade, and why you probably shouldn't worry too much about it. I find that often people will come into the office with a shoulder problem or shoulder pain and will tell me that another practitioner has told them it's because their shoulder blades don't move properly or because of scapular dyskinesis, which means shoulder blades move up and one lags behind or doesn't move so well. So I'll include a review paper at the bottom in the comments that talks about this, but there's basically not a lot of research that links scapular dyskinesis or winging specifically with, with having pain. And while I think it's probably a reflection that the shoulder is not functioning maybe optimally, I don't know if it really matters. And, that, and that's what these researchers say. And in our experience in our office, there are usually four things that can contribute to shoulder pain or a shoulder problem. Obviously, if there's trauma, if there's a rotator cuff injury, if there's irritation, there's a nerve that's aggravated, you have pain, there is a problem here. But in our experience, there are a few other factors that need to be considered as like the core problem or the root problem. Number one, nerves that leave the neck that actually go down to the shoulder. If you have a problem with these nerves, it is going to make you more likely to have shoulder pain or might be the cause of your shoulder pain. Number two, the shape or positioning of your spine. More of a thoracic kyphosis is gonna to lead to more tilting of the shoulder, poorer shoulder mechanics, less room for those tendons and nerves to pass through, and it's also gonna change the, the muscles and, and how they move, so that could actually be the cause of any scapular dyskinesis uh, or, or the, the structure of the neck. If you really shift it forward, it's gonna do the same things with the nerves and the muscles and how your shoulder functions. You're also gonna to have to consider the 17 or 18 muscles around the shoulder that might act like a limiter or a weight, an anchor dragging down the shoulder, stopping its proper movement, putting more stress on the shoulder joint. That shoulder joint or glenohumeral joint, it should contribute uh, two thirds or one third, sorry, two thirds or one half of the movement when reaching up overhead. And if the shoulder blade motion is limited, and, and dyskinesis doesn't mean limited, it means you know, an awkward movement of it. If that shoulder blade is limited and literally immobile, that could be another factor. So there are a ton of factors that can go along with uh, why somebody has shoulder pain or shoulder problem. If you've been told you have scapular dyskinesis or a winging scapula, are those things that you should address? Probably not specifically. What I would address specifically is making sure that the shoulder is strong, the shoulder is stable, that the spine that controls how that shoulder moves is healthy and stable, and that the nerves that go down to the shoulder, that they work properly. And this is why in our office, we so, see so many shoulder complaints that other practitioners have seen. People know in our office, we take more of a comprehensive, fundamental core approach to fixing a problem. And if just treating the shoulder doesn't do the job, that's where our more comprehensive approach works because we are gonna look at everything else. And so with the exercises we gave today, they're going to help with scapular winging. They should help with scapular dyskinesis. They should help make the shoulder stronger, more stable and healthy. But if there's more of a root problem, say in the spine, the nerves, etc., they might not be enough. So I'll include that paper. I don't think the dyskinesis and the winging is the core problem or the big issue. There are bigger fish to fry, as they say. I hope that's helpful. We could have gone into a more detailed discussion, but that's why I'll include that paper at the bottom. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching and listening. If you need anything, you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them below or send me a DM on Instagram. Take care, guys, and I'll see you soon.